What I have here is a really simple circuit with a source of EMF and also a couple of resistors. Now what we find is that uh, perhaps we have some potential difference, which I'm going to call V, uh, then this potential difference is shared between these two components. Now sometimes, uh, you know, this is a pretty boring and useless circuit, but we can actually maybe uh, make this resistor here into a thermistor. Now this is a good example of a sensing circuit. And what this means is uh, perhaps we call uh, this one here R1 and this R2. So we've just got our two different resistors. Uh, what we can look at is how these two things share that potential difference and how they actually divide up that potential difference between them. And this is just an example of a potential divider circuit. It's not hard as long as you just kind of think back to the basics and apply some very straightforward equations, think about the current, think about the total resistance, and if you do that, everything else makes sense. Now the whole point in a circuit like this is that we can uh, use this uh, in, maybe in order to maybe look at the surroundings, and what we can look at over here is perhaps the potential difference that we get out of the circuit. So I'm gonna call this V out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some kind of potential difference that we're, you know, some source of EMF, and this is, is what we're gonna call V in. Now, if we think back to the total resistance of these two resistors, we could say that for the circuit, RT is gonna be equal to R1 plus R2. Now, the important thing to, to realize here is that R1 is gonna be a fixed value, but R2 is going to change depending upon the temperature. And we can also maybe look at the current I that flows in this circuit. And because of Kirchhoff's first law, we know that the current everywhere in this circuit is gonna be exactly the same. So if we wanted to work out the value of this current, we could look at both uh, the potential difference in and also the value of the total resistance. So we can say that the current is equal to V in over RT. But if we consider the current that flows through uh, R2, we could also say that this current is gonna be equal to the value of V out, which again, this V out is gonna be the potential difference across this component, divided by the value of R2. And if we know that the current is the same everywhere in that circuit, what we can write is that V in over RT is gonna be equal to V out divided by R2. But remember that RT is gonna be equal to R1 plus R2. And if we substitute those into this equation, we can write this as, this isn't the most useful form of the equation. Perhaps what we can look at is if we know the values of R1 and R2, and we know the supply voltage of this circuit, we want to maybe look at the V out, the kind of uh, the potential difference or the voltage that we get out, which we can maybe connect to another part of a circuit, to maybe make a light turn on or maybe a, a heater start working. And we can write this as V out is equal to V in uh, multiplied by R2 over R1 plus R2. And this number here is very much just the ratio of this resistance to this resistance. The greater this resistance, the greater the share of the potential difference is going to take. And it's really uh, just using V equals IR for both of these equations here. And even if you forget what this equation is, you can just work out the current in the circuit. And if you know the current and the resistance at any point in the circuit, you can work out the potential difference across that bit. So that's all there really is to a potential divider circuit. All we're doing is we're dividing up this potential difference here uh, in, with maybe a couple of resistors. And what we find is if one of them is uh, a sensor, perhaps a heat sensor or a light sensor, then this changes its share of that potential difference. And we can use this in many ways. Perhaps if you have a light sensor, when it gets too dark, it turns an automatic light on. Perhaps if you have a heat sensor, when the heat drops below a certain value or the temperature drops below a certain value, we can use this to turn a heat on to maybe heat something up. So that's all there is to it. A couple of straightforward equations that if you apply them to any circuit, uh, taking each component one thing at a time, you can solve any problem there is to do with potential divider circuits. It's not that complicated, provide you practice and practice and just kind of keep working at it and then it'll all be fine.